testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It was a good night of, of, of boxing last night, especially if you're from Texas. My boy, you can see above my head right there, Errol Spence, uh, scored a unanimous deci- decision victory uh, over a very game Danny Garcia. Um, so that's what today's show is going to be about. Get down, uh, we're going to go over how both men performed, and uh, get into what could be next for, for, for both men. Um, it's a fight. It wasn't a great fight, and I wasn't one that thought um, Danny Garcia was completely outclassed. I don't think that it was competitive or, or one sided. Uh, I thought Garcia did good work. If you go back in the copy box, um, look, Errol Spence won the fight, he clearly won the fight. Okay, I had eight rounds before 116 to 112. I scored the first four. Tenth and uh, ninth and tenth. First, fourth, ninth and tenth for Garcia and everything else for Spence. Um, so I had an eight four. But you know, after ten, I have a six four. Meaning if Garcia could rally in the eleventh and twelfth, we have a draw that didn't happen. But last two rounds for Spence, uh, and and I had an eight four for him. He did excellent work with the jab. I uh, did some good work on the inside. Um, he was outboxing Garcia um, a lot in the early rounds. <clears throat> uh, but Garcia, even in the rounds he was losing, he was still competitive in a lot of those rounds. Um, in the seventh, he landed a good shot. In the second, he did some good work. In the third, he did some good work. Now, I didn't score those rounds for him. Um, like I said, I only scored those four rounds. Um, you could have had it around closer. Uh, you could have had it around two wider. Um, I think Garcia clearly won the fourth, ninth, and tenth. Um, I, I, I think Spence um, clearly won a lot of the middle rounds. Um, and then he, he clearly won the last two. Um, but I don't think it was one-sided. I'm getting a lot of that that uh, – Look, Garcia was clearly beaten. Uh, Spence was clearly the better man. But I thought Garcia, if you go look back, look at the copy box numbers, they both landed the same amount of power shots, 102 or 103, whatever it was, uh, which kind of shows that this fight was not out. Um, Spence owned the battle of the jab. And I, I want to get that because Garcia was too throwing too much jabs and not enough lead right hands. When you find a southpaw like Spence, you got to throw – a lot of right hands. And he was landing with the right hand. He was having success with the right hand. He was landing it in spots. He should have fired more. Um, Porter said that if, if Danny Garcia let his hands go more, maybe he wins the fight. Or he said he does win the fight. I don't know. You know he also leaves himself vulnerable if he, if he opens up against a guy like Spence. But Danny Garcia was having moments. He's having, he had more than a few. He said, I scored four rounds from him. I thought it was a competitive fight. Um, I think it was a good showing for Garcia. I, I, I've compared this fight a lot to Jacobs uh, when Jacobs fought Canelo. Like um, Jacobs did well in spots, he won some rounds, but he clearly lost. Um, you know, look, Errol Spence is the king of that division. Canelo was the king of middleweight when that fight happened, and, and all they did was show they were the best guy in weight class. And well, we're gonna get to, to Spence Crawford in a minute, but Spence is better than, than Danny Garcia, and that came to fruition last night. Um, and it wasn't completely one sided. Danny Garcia is a great fighter. Danny Garcia is just in the wrong weight class at the wrong time. Um, he was in a different era. He could he could maybe have had a long reigning run as a world champion. Fortunately, you know, he ran into Thurman, lost a close decision, or a close decision to Porter. Um, what's interesting though is I I all three fights one sixteen one twelve uh, against Garcia. So I don't know what that means. Um, but that's what I've had. Um, but it really was a, a, an excellent performance by
Sean Porter, and we're going to get to Danny Garcia next, too. But Sean Porter says that he's the mandatory for the WBC, the IVF, and the WBL. Um, that means he's the mandatory challenger for both Spence's belt and Terrence Crawford's belt. He said he's more interested. He would prioritize fighting Crawford. I think you get that next. I think we get Crawford versus Spence. I mean, Crawford versus Porter, April, May of 2021. And I think you get Spence in somewhat of a tune-up fight, which very well could be Ugas. Um, I'm thinking that's kind of who I'm thinking. It could be a James or, or something like that. But my hunch, my guess is Ugas is once they announce that Crawford Porter out to the fight Crawford and go the WBO route. I think that's the fight we're going to see. Um, for Errol Spence, that kind of leaves him again in no man's spot, right? I mean, who else is there? Unless I'll leave you with Hooker. Um, but I think Hooker's going to take something in, in, in the intermediate. Um, and then who else would, would come up and fight him? You know, who else is Mario Barrios? Does Barrios want to come up to 147 and his first fight test the water? With Errol Spence, that'd be a big, that'd be a tall order, right? I'd like to see uh, Barrios fight someone else at 140, or take a tune-up fight at 140. There's a hooker, and Barrios are, I, I think, one fight away. So that's not going to happen. Um, it kind of leaves Ugas. That's where we're at, and it's like again, that, that's similar to Ugas. Will have some success. He'll, he'll do okay. He's certainly not going to win the fight. I wouldn't think, right? I would definitely pick Spence to win that fight. The best bet would be if you if a fight Keith Thurman, but he's not going to do that because Thurman wouldn't fight him. Um, and then the other half of that, then you have Crawford versus Porter. Whoever wins that fight, I think fight Spence in the second half of 2021. Right. So a year from now, let's say Crawford fights. You know, Spence that he's going to fight in the summer. I think it's against Ugas. I think in June or July he fights Ugas. I think in April or May Porter. Uh, fights Crawford, and let, let's say Crawford wins that, which I'm not conceding that, that Porter doesn't win that fight, but let's just, for the sake of this conversation, say Crawford wins, we finally get, and then Spence beats Ugas, which I'm a lot more confident in saying. Uh, Spence fights uh, Crawford at the end of 2021. Um, so you, you get, it, this is just my hunch, you get Ugas, uh, you get Crawford and Porter in April and May, you get um, Spence versus Ugas in June or July, and then, uh, you know, this time next year, November, December of 2021, you get you finally get Crawford versus Spence. Should both those guys win, or if Porter wins, then you get Porter versus Spence, or if Ugas wins, which is not going to happen, then you have a whole situation. Um, but I, that's kind of my hunt, that's kind of my what my thinking is. Um, Danny Garcia, where does Garcia go next? That's a real good question. Um, right. I would love to see him fight either Boots Enos or rematch with Keith Thurman. Because Keith Thurman is going to need a dance partner. This is a good one. Uh, can fight is Castillo, but that's not really a name. Like the two places I would have an old Philly showdown with Boots. Or, because Boots needs a name. Boots is ready. right? Boots is ready to fight those elite guys. Or fight um, a rematch with Keith Thurman. Those would be the two fights I would look at if, if I were him. Uh, I know Jose Lopez is going to want a big name. He got another impressive win. I, I'm not really into that. We saw what, he did, what Thurman did to him. Um, and that was a good fight. You know, um, Lopez had some moments, but... Lopez is just a notch below. Then it, it, there, there's not a Jamal James, again, is, is a name that, that may come up. Um, I, I think Garcia James could have, but I, I, what I would want to see is either Garcia Boots or Garcia uh, Thurman Part 2. Hopefully you get one of those things. What I'd really like to see is Danny Garcia fight Virgil Ortiz, Grand Prairie Texas in the house. But I don't think that's going to happen. I would love to see that happen. And if Oscar is smart, he would do it. And even if he has to, look, send him over to PBC and have the fight on Fox or Showtime or whatever. Um, it's a big fight. 
It will put your guy on the map. It will help make him a star. It will put him in a position where he can fight the rest of your stable, your Earl, Earl Spencer, Sean Porters, uh, later in the year or, or 2022 or whatever it may be. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll do an episode on what Virgil Ortiz should do next. I, I think he's the future of the division. Um, I think he will run this division for, for a while. Uh, we'll get to all that. Um, Virgil Ortiz versus Maurice Hooker. How do you feel about that? Um, Virgil Ortiz versus Mario Barrios at 47. Uh, I mean, I would love Virgil Ortiz versus Mikey Garcia, but I don't think you're going to get that because they both train in the same camp. Um, so I, I, for Garcia, I, I think you, you get – if you don't go straight into a real kind of soft touch tune-up, um, I think you get either Boots or um, – Keep that rematch, but let me know what you guys think. I put my pound the power of power razor up now. I'll put a, bit, a link uh, to it in, in 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 the description uh, below. I uh, new updated top ten welterweight rankings. Um, the top two or shouldn't really surprise you. Um, and, and this is my list. If Thurman or Pacquiao don't fight in the near future, I'm gonna take them down. It's been a year and a half since either of them have fought, but I don't know how to take at least Pacquiao. He still has a belt. He still has a major belt. Um, I don't know. Um, Virgil Ortiz has some WBA gold belt or something. They should have him fight Ugas and take the belt away from Pacquiao if he's not going to fight. Just my thought. Um, and somebody has the interim belt in that division too. Like the, the WBA has a ton of belts. They should take one of the belts or Pacquiao and let someone else fight for it. If Pacquiao's not going to defend it, he doesn't fight anymore, which is fine. He's 42 years old. It's fine. But, I mean, let's be realistic about it. Uh, but I have those ratings up. I have my top 10 Walter Wright rankings up. That's on 3D box right now. I will also put it in the description below. I'll put a link to that. Um, follow me on social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Find my Fighter of the Week article on fightpost.uk. Uh, I think you can guess who it's going to be this week. That shouldn't come as a great surprise. I had a run of, of, of heavyweights prior to this. Um, this will come to an end. Uh, my fighter of the week. Um, but uh, find me off on social media, 3Boxing, 3Boxing blog. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.